Our next guest says that McCarthy didn't want Democrats' help, and joining us right now to talk about it is Problem Solvers Caucus co-chair Josh Gottheimer. Uh, Congressman Gottheimer, first of all, thank you for joining us. I, I know you were watching that interview yesterday with Congressman Fitzpatrick. Um, I, I, I guess I was going back just thinking, wow, this is the group of, what are the 34 of you who, who work across the aisle, who always 64. talk to each other? Uh -huh. Oh, 64, 30, 32 of each party who work across the aisle and who have always been able to talk to each other. And I, I just wondered how much tension this put on all of your relationships with each other, um, this exercise. Listen, it was an emotional few days, you know, and, and, uh, and I totally understand that. And I'm really lucky to have such uh, great colleagues on both sides of the aisle in the Problem Solvers Caucus to work with, like Brian, who's a phenomenal leader. Uh, you know, these are tough times, and but we'll get through them. I've, I've been on the phone the last couple of days with plenty of my colleagues on the Republican side in the caucus and talking about how we move forward and, and what steps we have to take next, especially given the fact that in, uh, best, I guess, 38 days from now, uh, we're facing another government shutdown. So we've got a lot of work to do to make sure we protect the country, uh, you know, and we avoided the shutdown working together this past week to help our make sure our veterans and our active duty military and our defense and our seniors and our children were all protected uh, from a shutdown. And now we have to get back to the table. I think we've got to, we're, we're already talking about how we're going to change the rules of the House and work to do that together to prevent one person from being able to uh, take out a leader. And uh, that's, that's, so that's what's next. So that's where Democrats and Republicans can see eye to eye. Both, both, both sides of the aisle would like to say this shouldn't be able to happen again. Yeah, I mean, we have to work out changes to the rules package, which is what governs the House and, and allowed Matt Gates for one person to call the question. And we have to figure out what other change we can make to the rules that would allow for more bipartisan governing to prevent these kind of shutdowns, to prevent these, you know, 39, 45-day cycles where, where people can, you know, you know scream and yell and, and shut the place down. And so we've got a lot of work to do, and the, but I'm really optimistic there's ways to do this. Okay, the, the part of... Representative Fitzpatrick's point yesterday, and what I've heard from other Republicans too, is the frustration that the Democrats could have voted earlier on, even if it wasn't voting for McCarthy, either abstain, just a vote president, uh, or in the vote leading up to that, say, no, we're not going to allow this this one uh, representative to bring this to the table. We, we could have voted against that. What happened? Why? Why not? Because their well, point has I, been, well, you're going to wind up with somebody who's less willing to work across the aisle at this point. Yeah, well, of course, we worked incredibly hard uh, and, and spent a lot of time and a lot of conversations. I know I did personally looking for a way to get an agreement where we could allow for more bipartisan legislation to come to the floor, more of the Democrats' priorities to get to get to the floor of the House. Uh, and, you know, and, and we, so we, we were looking for ways. But Kevin McCarthy, you know, and, and I don't begrudge him this, it's his decision. He said over and over again, and he said it right after the vote, that he didn't, quote, want to sell his soul to Democrats and that he you know, wouldn't ask for any deal uh, or anything from Democrats. So it, it's, it takes two to tango. It's tough to work out an agreement like that uh, unless if the other side isn't interested, right? And that, that's what we were facing in this situation. So it wasn't as if we didn't try. And, you know, some folks have said, well, why don't you just vote for him or support him? And I said, well, you know, I, would you vote for Nancy Pelosi? Uh, right. you know, this, is, this is a very, you know, these picking your speaker or your leader is a party decision. It's a decision that's made, as you're seeing right now, within a respective caucus of the of the majority party. That's what they're working on right now. That's a family discussion. I'm not in that family, um, right? So I'm not invited to that family dinner. Uh, so you know, there's things they have to work out. But in just their if, if if you did just did it in a vacuum, if it was just if you were able to just totally do something based on what was likely good for the country and maybe even eventually good for your party. I don't know if the next speaker is going to be any better than. McCarthy, for, for your speech, we, we do have all these pressing issues in the next 30 or 40 days. Who knows how long this is going to take? You guys, could have, you guys and gals could have figured that out, that it's going to throw it into chaos. And I don't expect, I'm cynical, I don't expect either side uh, to not revel in, in schadenfreude. And, and I go back to, to the Merrick Garland, uh, Mitch McConnell situation, and everyone told me back then that that's just, Totally unacceptable. The worst thing anyone's ever done. I said, if you can do something in politics, you do it with the party. And if Democrats had been in the same position, they would have done the same thing. And that's why I don't begrudge you for this. It was those eight guys. It was absolutely uh, those eight guys that, that deserve all the blame. But in a perfect world, 
the Problem Solvers Caucus could have solved that problem uh, through bipartisanship, but we can't expect anybody. It, it's just a nice word, Josh. It'll never mean anything, and well, it'll okay, never. Okay. When so, rubber I... meets the road, when the rubber meets the road, you're unable to do it in the environment. It's not your fault. It's the environment we find ourselves in right now with the two parties. It's impossible. So, John, I don't know I'm, John, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna push back a little bit on that. If you look, <laughs> at the, I'm gonna, if you look just to this past weekend. We fought and worked together. Then to why didn't the you reward him for that? Then you threw him out. After Wait, you on. did that, then you then you pulled the rug out from under him. Why didn't that hold earn on. him any goodwill? Hold, hold on. It, but as I said to you, it's not as if we didn't try. It's not as if we didn't make many. Oh, you offers needed of more. You needed together. To. Right. But if you, if you're working with somebody, Joe, if you work with somebody who's not interested in talking to you about it at all, but that he doesn't was want already to dealing with Matt it. Gates saying I'm he looking, made a side deal. He was he was dealing with Gates. But I, I get his point. You, you don't get anything out of it. If you, just said you, did, you just said he did no, work with look, you. So if you look at the record, he worked on keeping the government open. We worked together. On the debt ceiling deal, we worked together. Last year, you know, and then the caucus was, we worked together on the infrastructure bill and the CHIPS Act and the PACT Act oh, to help. Our I'm country. over it. All I'm over things, it. By the way, Joe, this is one of these things that's, with, that's held within the family. They're working on that now. That's their leader is their decision. Joe, you're telling me if you brought every Republican on no. here. I just said no. They would vote for Nancy Pelosi. No. Oh, my God. They threw her out of her office. They would have voted for Nancy Pelosi. They, the yeah, first thing right. they did was, t was oh, take her out of No. Hey, Josh, really quickly, we are over Jeffries, I would be fine. Like, but, right. you know, we're, let's we're, look for, for a solution like that. It's we're fine. over time. Yesterday, we had uh, Bill Daly, who said he now puts odds of a shutdown at 90 percent. Uh, do you? I think it's really tough, uh, but I'm, I, I'm not there on that yet. I mean, I think people, it's amazing what can happen when we're facing a shutdown and people realize the impact it'll have on the country and it forces people together. We're already working on that, right? So th that's the point. And the problems, the members of the problems are already talking to each other about what we need to do to make sure that doesn't happen, because that's about the country. It's about common sense. They don't want to bow to the extremists. They don't want extremism either. So we're going to work this out. I, I have phenomenal colleagues on both sides of the aisle. And, and I'll tell you right now, the members of the Problem Solvers Caucus, it's moments like this that we'll step up. It's a t been a tough few days. That's okay. We will get past this and we'll put the country first and we'll, and we'll get through it.